Okay, the session's going to start in a couple of seconds with Nancy Zengrone. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to today's session. My name is Nellie Deutsch, not Nancy, but our speaker is Dr. Nancy Zengrone, who's right here. And a little bit about our presenter. Uh, but before I start, if you could just add in the chat box where you're from. I guess people will be coming in as we go. And feel free to use the chat box uh, for chatting uh, throughout the session. You're allowed to. And if you have any questions, if you could just leave them to the end, that would be great. So we've got Tom from Venezuela, but originally from the UK, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. And Nancy's here from uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, in the woods. <laughs> and the leaves are, oh my gosh, that must be so beautiful. And Susanna's here. Welcome, Susanna. And Style is here, joining us from um, Paraguay, Asasion. And Fatima is here. Hello, Fatima. Good to see you. But I don't remember, Fatima, where you're from. Ah, from New York. So welcome from New York. I, I presume you're not Fatima from uh, John Green's class, but maybe you are. If you are, let me know. All right, so... Um, Let's get started. Uh, a little bit about Nancy. Nancy and I met finally in uh, 2012. Actually, last year. <laughs> it seems like much longer, but I guess it wasn't. Nancy, it was last year. Um, and, well, if you think of internet years, it seems like a couple of years. And uh, it was in Virginia Beach, where it was really lovely. The weather was wonderful. And it was at a conference. Right now, we're at a live online conference, which is quite different because we don't get a chance to actually uh, be in the same space physically. But we are in the same space virtually and in many other ways as well. All right, so we're going to get started. We're continuing the sessions about blogging, and I hope that you are using a blog for this and that you're going to uh, post about this session and other sessions on integrating with technology or at, teaching with technology and uh, teaching with blended and the flipped classroom or integrating. All right, so Nancy, I'm going to pass on the mic to you. And I think you know how to uh, move the slides, but if you want me to do it, I'll do it for you. No, it's okay. Can you hear me? Very well, as always. <laughs> so, good afternoon. Um, good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Um, I'm a little droopy. I've been uh, with a cold for a couple of days, so I'm not really sure what time it is. Um, I'm, I'm a very new blogger. I have uh, two blogs. One I started uh, last year. No, it's okay. And, Can you hear me? Um, the one that I misspelled, English for Academic Uses, that was um, <laughs> Oh, good. Um, I, good morning. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Um, I'm a little droopy. I've been... Uh, with a cold for a couple of days, so I'm not really sure what time it is. Um, I'm, I'm a very new blogger. I have uh, two blogs. One I started uh, last year, <clears throat> and um, the one that I misspelled, English for Academic Uses, that WordPress.com, um, is one that I uh, one that I started very recently, and I misspelled it on the, on the tile there. If there's an echo, someone might have... Um, out of your their headset open or be not have a headset um, but I'm on one um, oh good okay um, so let me get started I'm a little flustered today 
Okay, so today's topic are three. The first section is going to be about looking for sources of advice on blogging. Um, and there are two ways to do that, casting your net widely, which means go out of your industry and look for whoever you can find who can give you advice on blogging. And then once you've done that, um, cast your net more narrowly, so then you would you would start looking for teachers who are blogging or English teachers who are blogging or people that are at your same grade level. But you want to start very widely, especially um, because there's so much out there on the internet. There's so many really wonderful people from of all ages that are talking about their experience, um, whether it's for their hobbies or their school or it's for <coughs> Um, um, it's a job. It's a it's a public relations kind of a thing. That and these these folks who've got great experience are have put together have shared their knowledge about how to do blogging. So you want to make sure that you take a look wide and narrow. And we'll talk about that in, more in a minute. Then you want to search for sources on advice on branding and marketing because it's very we're talking about blogging to establish yourself as an online teacher. And there's an awful lot of us out there. Um, and and what you need to do is get across who you are uniquely, who you are, um, and what you offer in a unique sense. And that's very important to be able to do. And it does it does not have to be, as we'll see when we go along, it does not have to be the type of branding. And that's a word. And the type type of, of marketing. So branding is how you you think of your cohesive picture to the world your cohesive me me uh, message to the world, how to present exactly who you are or as close to who you are as you can get in order to um, find those students who are really looking for the thing that you're offering. <clears throat> so once again, you want to do that by casting your net very widely, looking for anybody who's working on branding or marketing in whatever industry they might be, and then narrowing in on your own industry, on other online teachers and how they're doing things. <clears throat> and then you want to, especially as you get more information on how people are doing things, you want to set yourself kind of an academic task. And, and you want to take a look at the way your colleagues are blogging to get across who they who are and what they know to their prospective students and see whether or not that they're using this general advice. I've gotten an enormous amount of information from um, being a fan of Nellie's, Dr. Nellie's um, blogs, of Ludmilla Spirnova's blogs, of, of um, all kinds of different people. I'm particularly interested in the virtual world second life, so I follow Scott Merrick, who's a a teacher in a virtual high school and I follow a number of other people and when you look at how they handle things enjoy what they say but then also step back and say hmm is this the kind of methodology I want to use for myself so once you've gotten yourself to the point where you feel you've got the advice you've kind of taken a look at what everybody's doing and you're starting to put together an idea of who you are and and what you have to offer then you want to Try start trying to establish your brand, and, and so you're going to decide on a look, a feel, or a color scheme, a saying that capture, captures your passion. <clears throat> you're also going to want to go in exactly. You're generating your persona, Tom. That's that's perfect. Um, you 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 want to go in and you want to take a look at other people that are in your area who are also blogging on on topics that are important to you and you start commenting on those blogs. Now one of the reasons why you comment, um, not only to give support to fellow fellow teachers and so on, but also to to show what your point of view is and how you approach certain things. Um, and that gives you another way of establishing your persona, generating your persona. Then you want to share blogs written by other folks with similar interests. If you come across cross a blog that's absolutely spectacular you want to make sure that that you're blogging about that blog too and there's some, a few other ways to do this and then when you're ready you blog 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 um, and we'll see a little bit about what what people's uh, what people have to say about how to do this the right way now when I say cast your net widely 
<clears throat> I always start with videos, and I, I usually go to three sites, Vimeo, Yahoo Videos, and YouTube, um, and I'm not sure where, what's available in everybody's countries, so you may have to kind of look for a site that, that you have access to. And I put in a very, very wide open um, uh, kind of a set of keywords to look for um to kind of uh, to look for uh, uh, the blog so for instance I just wrote how to blog and on Vimeo I got this enormous uh, set of um, uh, wonderful suggestions of people to go out and take a look at and see what they say and on YouTube I got a similar great group of, of suggestions and on Yahoo video as well so this gives you this idea of, of what everybody is after and what everybody says. And I think initially when you're doing this, um, especially if you have in mind that you're going to be doing it for a particular uh, industry, like you're a teacher, so you think, well, I should be just looking at what teachers have to say about blogging. Well, that's, that's, that's one way to do it, but I think it's better if you start way out first and you just look for absolutely anybody that is talking about how to blog. So you're not limiting yourself to people in your own industry. You're not limiting yourself to professional bloggers with high high um, production values that are able to do things that you're not able to do. And you're certainly not limiting yourself to people who look like you. Um, some of this little gentleman down here in the corner. Let me get my let me get the pointer here. This little guy down here in the in in the corner is a young man in maybe his late teens, early twenties, and he has a series of blogs about blogging. And he's very smart. He's got a really good handle on what the important activities are that you need to be engaging in to do a blog that gets read. So you don't you want to cast that net widely, and you want to be open to all kinds of people offering you advice. And you'll know within the first few seconds if this is someone that's worth continuing to to watch. Another another thing you want to do is is look for best practices on blogging. Now, if you go to the um, if you go to the the courseware page for this course to the tutorial which is this PowerPoint you'll see the PowerPoint and you'll each one of these links that I'm putting up here to videos is live I just didn't want to put piles and piles of videos into this into this lecture <coughs> so this is taken from a very charming um, blog on a book that's recently come out by uh, a man named Steven Johnson it's called where good ideas come from and um, he talks about if you're going to do this, you need to cultivate the social pulse. You need to try and figure out what's going on out there. And his main point in this wonderful little animation is chance favors the connected mind. So it's, it's, it's that old adage that if you're well prepared, you're reading widely, you're reading narrowly, you're talking to people who have experiences that you would like to have. Um, you're trying to find as much information as you can from as many different types of people as you can about doing the thing you want to do, like blogging. <clears throat> that all of that stuff is is preparatory. All of it lays the groundwork for you to be able to figure out what is going to work for you and what is not going to work for you. And his his main point is a, is a kind of a uh, um, kind of a, a variety of that piece of advice saying that if you're very connected you're you go to Facebook pages for your industry you're on LinkedIn groups you're reading widely on the internet you're generating friends in a place like WizIQ. IQ you're you're connecting yourself up with people from all over the world who have similar interests and similar needs as you do well chance favors the connected mind as you get more connected you're more there's more support there for what you can do and there's more opportunities for you to learn what you can do best practices is one of my big um, I always say how to I when I'm looking I say how to blog and um, blogging best practices <clears throat> and these two videos that I found are actually for the physical therapy um, industry uh, and it, so they're put together it's called Therapedia 
and it's put together by an association for physical therapists. So the blo the YouTube videos are actually pointed towards individual physical therapists who have private practices and how they can make their private practices um, successful through blogging. And, and it's wonderful. Um, a lot of the advice that they give is, is very, very good. And, it, and some of the examples that they give, you can easily understand how those types of things could work for a teacher as well. Um, and they say the best practices are engage, become visible, define your audience, and find your voice. And all of this comes from looking inward, too, and trying to understand who it is that you are and what it is that you contribute uniquely in the world. And I have a series of questions later that, that I think if you... If you ask, ask, ask and answer those, you get a head start. This one is from a woman from a, um, a company that's a, a big company. And their best practice message in this, uh, um, they blog for financial gain. And I don't remember what the, the company was, but you'll be able to see the YouTube if you're interested. Very, very uh, lovely speaker. And she talks about the importance of establishing yourself as a thought leader. I think Dr. Nelly is a huge example of, of someone who, ha, who has very successfully done that. We all know that she knows more about online education than we do. And we all know that um, she's out there everywhere and has been for years talking about all of the things that are very important to her, to her particular interests. My friend Scott Merrick <clears throat> um, from, from uh, Tennessee who's a virtual world ed educator as well as a virtual online educator for, for high school students. He's, he's done a lot of this too, really gotten himself into the forefront so that people come to him and to his various blogs to kind of figure out what's going on in that area, what's going on there. So you become a thought leader. You find an area that you're really interested in and you take what you know about it and you keep learning and keep contributing what you're learning as you go. And man, who I mentioned before, <clears throat> his blogs are wonderful. He's got three or four of them. And this one is called um, How to Blog, How to Write a Blog. Define your message is one of the main things that he says. So if you're going to be writing a blog about one specific type of education, decide in general what it is that you want to get across. For instance, Crystal Brody, who, who does a lot of uh, work with Nelly in, in uh, the courses on WizIQ, one of her blogs basically is just a re, uh, uh, almost like a retweet. It's a, um, she's constantly referring people to very interesting things that she's found that have to do with technology education or statistics about education or tips for teachers. <clears throat> so she doesn't really put very much of herself into that particular blog, but she, you can always count on her pushing ahead things that she found. And that connected with her other blogs and her other activities and Facebook groups and so on, establishes her as a person with a particular message. And that's what you want to do. And you can, it, that doesn't mean that you can't have more than one message, obviously. But what you would like, what you probably would be better off doing is making sure that an individual blog has a particular message and then another blog has another um, message, that kind of thing. So you cast your net narrowly. Once you've done this wide thing, you've looked at everybody, people who are blogging for money, people who are blogging for their businesses, people who are in other <clears throat> industries that are similar to um, or have similar problems as um, teachers have, then you start looking at people in education and you start looking for blogs in education. Um, and when you click down here, you'll get a, a video on blogs and education. You want to look for teachers who talk about blogging. How do they describe why they blog? What are the best practices that other online teachers have that are different from some of these other industries? Now, the only way you're going to know that is because you've already been out looking at the other, at the wider group of industries <clears throat> and all the other bloggers, not everybody, but the people that you found. You've always already been out there and looked at that that big group that doesn't that isn't just your folks. So you know what they're thinking about. You know what they're saying. Now, as you look at online teachers, now you can say, well, are my colleagues doing the things that they're saying in the wider world, or are they doing something a little bit different? And should I follow what 
the other online teachers are doing, is that a better practice than the best practice of the, of the wider group? And that's something that you can now think about because you've taken a look at all these other things. <clears throat> and then you also want to talk about, you also want to think about are there dangers for teachers who blog that don't exist in other industries? And I think the answer to that is yes. Um, when you take a look at the that, that second, this guy over here, I'm always pointing with my finger like you can see through the camera and see my finger on the screen. Um, these, this one over here was about a woman who, um, in a very not not nice way, um, complained quite bitterly about the the intellectual ability of her students in a blog, which is a, an exceedingly sad practice, and <laughs> she should have known better. But even when you're doing something positive, you be, you believe, or you're doing something um, um, that you think is reasonable, it may be that the school has a different view of that. Or the principal has a different school view of that, or the parents, or the board of education, or whatever. So teachers may not have mu as much freedom in what they're doing as um, when they're in a t when they're in a school system as what they would have if they were an individual online teacher selling their wares or a tutor <clears throat> selling their own wares, being a, a one man or a one woman operation. So that's another thing you have to think about is um, are there things about your niche, your spot in the teaching world that means you're going to have to go through that list of best practices and say, mm, I can't do this. That's not going to be good for me. I can do this and this. So that's something that you also learn from all of this. Now, this is still existing at the level of videos. These, these were videos that I went and I looked at. And I looked at lots and lots and favorited many of them. I actually started my own YouTube channel initially just so that I could favorite um, uh, things that, that uh, were teaching me online teaching. Now I use it for other things, <clears throat> as you'll see. And then I move from there over to Google search, essentially, or whatever search engine you've got. And I started looking for blogs. And I began to look for advice on branding. And I, I did that as well on YouTube, on best practices for blogging. And so on. I found a lot of blogs, a lot of blogs that existed out there, and a lot of articles and essays about how individual teachers do things. And also, what are the things you have to think about if you're trying to brand yourself? And so these are a couple that I found that I really thought were quite, quite interesting. This one particularly is a nice blog, The Connected Teacher. So now I, I started to look at all of the examples of the types of things that I wanted to do. I wanted to blog. I wanted to write an essay on a fairly consistent basis that um, the people who followed me could expect to see <clears throat> and that would allow me to, to work through how I think about teaching and how I want to do what I want to do. And I started out with um, my first WordPress, but, and I, I believe in free. <laughs> if you, Anything you can do for free is the best. So I have um, I have a WordPress uh, free WordPress uh, blog, and my first one was on just on teaching in general. And I've talked about the Coursera courses I've ta taken. I've talked about my favorite teachers. Um, I've talked about a few issues. Responded to some articles that I've read, and more recently, because I'm I'm trying to reta retrain as a uh, teacher of English to students um, of other languages, speakers of other languages, I started this blog called English for Academic Uses um, that I'm going to use as a journal, essentially. I've only done one um, entry for that so far. So um, there's going to be another one after today. <clears throat> but I wanted to do what these people are doing, so I started reading around, reading a lot, a lot of the blogs that were out there, and reflecting on whether or not these folks were, as I had said in an earlier slide, were these folks following some of this great advice that other people were giving? And if no, <laughs> why not? <clears throat> Now, um, branding is, as Tom Tom Hodges said, just um, it's it's just generating your persona. It's it's discovering who you are and attempting. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there. I, I just I just saw the 
your comments and then a lot of people making a living out there and they have a different point of view <clears throat> about what they're doing with blogging but they're still contributing an enormous amount because you can't you really cannot um, do a blog write a blog without engaging who you are and, and what you are so even when you're um, getting getting income from uh, in in on page advertisements or some other kind of thing <clears throat> you're still you're still having to put something of yourself there in the middle of it so in terms of branding people have talked about what you want to do is you want to figure out who you are you want to figure out what your message is you want to figure out how you can tie together all the pieces of the of, of the efforts that you're making to turn yourself into a connected person a connected teacher to to lay that groundwork for being out there, essentially. <clears throat> I uh, last year or the year before, um, I can't remember. No, I think it was last year actually. I think it was last year. I uh, my husband and I went to Brazil. It was a year before. My husband and I went to Brazil to teach um, for a week at the University of São Paulo, and. Um, he took a picture of me coming back from the bathroom in the, in the corridor and I it's not a great picture it's uh, kind of fuzzy and um, it's not the clearest thing in the world but I love that picture and I love that picture for two reasons one because I was doing something we were both doing something that we really love to do we were teaching together we were team teaching graduate students for a week in this wonderful university with some very close colleagues of ours who we've known for a long time. So there was a lot of positive stuff. There were about 40 folks taking the courses. So it, it was a wonderful kind of experience. It was an ability to, to it was, it was, a, it was an opportunity to do something really good for folks. And I love this picture, not just because, like, in the picture and I like the outfit I was wearing but because I have these really good um, really good memories connected to that picture so this little guy here this is this is a uh, part of that picture the wider picture shows me standing in the hallway and a colleague of ours kind of running behind me trying to get out of the frame <clears throat> and and the first time I used it I actually used it on Twitter um, and I, I had in my old home I used to do a lot of uh, planting of flowers and so on so I, I put a flower made a banner out of some of my flowers and stuck my head there but I was also following it was a very kind of um, <clears throat> not very slick uh, attempt to uh, not a very sophisticated attempt to follow the advice which was to make sure that if I branded something that I would try to keep the colors kind of consistent and so I did that. I thought that the, the the flowers looked a little bit like the color in my shirt. So I started this, and what I what I put into Twitter was exploring what's out there, and that that became the tagline for my very first um, blog as well. So that's kind of what I use. I use it in LinkedIn. I use it in a lot of different places. And you can see I use that same photo, a slightly larger version of that same photo in English for Academics and in uh, Thinking About Learning, which was my first blog. And I use it um, on WizIQ for my teacher's thing. And then I, when I finally turned my YouTube channel into a channel where I was putting up um, videos of my own, <coughs> I also use that photo. So I've attempted to, and I use that tagline, exploring what's out there, as much as I can. It doesn't say, um, I'm an online teacher that you need to come and take uh, courses from, but I think it explains an attitude, I hope. So that was how I thought about it. So these are the questions you have to ask yourself as you're starting that blogging process. Not only are you going to be thinking about color, the color of your pictures, the color of of your um, whether the picture means something to you what does it convey to other people um, um, your color scheme in terms of the kinds of things that you want to use but you also need to think about these things that are essential to you you want to you want to talk to yourself or listen to yourself articulate in some way <clears throat> what is your personal story as an educator what why should prospective students trust you 
how much do you contribute of what you know and contribution is as important as anything else as, as, as Ludmilla and Nelly like to say sharing is caring and it's it's very important how much do you sell of what you want of what you know so then you get a kind of an idea of what's your goal in terms of the amount of work that you want to get from the blogging that you're doing how, what do you care about as a teacher is it the students is it the knowledge is it the system is it is it the is it the process what are your personal passions for me it's exploring what's out there learning more every day um, and learning things that are maybe not so well understood what are the aspects of what you can give that you want to focus on and you can change that blog by blog <coughs> um, as well and what is your philosophy of teaching and it, if you've been taking courses with Nelly you, you can take that TPI and take a look the the uh, I've forgotten what TPI stands for Nelly um, the inventory um, and I, I was quite happy to see that I'm mostly nurturing um, because that's kind of what I'm trying to what I'm trying to express teachers perspectives inventory I'm trying to expect express it I want you to learn the information and I want you to I want you to come along with the the subject matter but I want I want to um, nurture you as you do that I don't want to I don't want to sit on your head and make you unhappy so this is a wonderful thing this came out of um, this was uh, I do some blogging I'm one of a group of bloggers for WizIQ, IQ <clears throat> and um, I don't know how it works for everybody else but for me I do the text and um, the person that I work with at WizIQ IQ picks the images and I thought this was a really wonderful this is one called five ways to market your online courses that I published not too long ago on WizIQ. IQ and she found this quote that says marketing is no longer about the stuff that you make but out the, but about the stories you tell and I think that's really important to remember the story of you as a teacher the story of where the student will be when they go through your course the story of what we should be doing and all that kind of stuff telling stories is is absolutely at the foundation of who we are as social beings we're always telling stories to ourselves and to other people and sitting in the evening and watching stories that other people have put together on on, on you know on on uh, television or on YouTube stories stories is very important and and a story is a is a much more personal way of taking your information and getting it across um, not only do you learn from crafting your story but other people learn more about you because of the way that you've put it together than they would if you did a little academic essay about your background so you have to also spread your brand through commenting and this top part here unlike Nelly <laughs> I, uh, I get a little nervous about losing the information that I've found so in my um, browser I have lots of subdirectories and in the subdirectories I have subdirectories so if I find something that I really love I try to keep track of it so for instance I have a subdirectory called art, uh, blogs I'm following and then I have a whole list of blogs that I go periodically through on quiet evenings when there's nothing else to do to see what's the new thing that came up for these individuals frequently I don't um, ask to get an email notification because I follow an awful lot of blogs and I have way too many emails as, as it is already but you can also trust it to the winds you can also just go back to your search uh, your favorite search engine and put that same set of keywords in and just see what comes up this time as Nelly says the internet is your memory or you can do what I do <clears throat> a lot of people recently have been talking about the importance of starting LinkedIn groups um, and you can do this with Facebook as well LinkedIn and Facebook both have, have discussion groups and if you're commenting one of the things you want to do with your I mean first you want to have some free 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 floating um, um, experiences of commenting on stuff just because you want to comment on stuff but when you want to make some kind of a point or you see or you feel that some point from your perspective is is important in a particular discussion then essentially what you're doing is you're kind of spreading your brand by com commenting 
talking about, well, your experience with this thing is slightly different from the person who just said something. Um, your experience was this. And if you have a blog that covers your experience, so much the better. Now you've got a link to your blog that goes back and it actually fits. Um, oh, lovely. Thanks, Nilly. It actually fits the the in the discussion because the last thing you want to do is start hitting people over the head with links to your blog. But if you can fit it into a discussion um, and it's relevant to a discussion, then people come to your story in a positive way. They don't feel like they've been forced there or that you dropped an ad into a discussion that everybody's been having in a kind of a positive way. So that's one thing you want to do is, is comment. And then spreading your brand through sharing that's so, so important. One really wonderful way to do that is to get onto WizIQ and get a premium teacher's account um, and start giving little classes on your stuff or giving um, um, courses on your stuff. And people will start coming in and getting involved in what you're doing. And not only do you get practice at being an online teacher if that's where where you're going but you also um, make friends with people who are already online teachers or who are learning to be an online teacher or um, yes well Estelle I hope you will do it um, so so that's one great way of doing it is being it is just putting together a free course and and using it as a way to teach yourself how to do what you need to do and um, and through that you'll meet some wonderful people your blogs are, are a form of sharing because you're not if you not monetize them um, so there's lots of different ways that you can do it so basically what we've talked about today and and before before um, I finished the slide I wanted to say that it, uh, up at the right hand side of the chat box um, you know, you have that all on the left, and then on the right it says copy chat. If you copy chat, it will take the whole chat, everything that's been in the chat, all these wonderful links, excuse me, and it will put them into a uh, onto a clipboard, and you can open up your Word doc, um, you know, your Word processor, and copy it and just paste it in. And that way you'll have all of the links and all of this discussion that we've had today. So what I've talked about is finding and following best practices for branding in general and for teachers. And and once again, you go to the videos first. If you can get to videos, go to the videos. Do the do the the widest possible search you can do. You can take a look at use some of the links that I've put put there. Use some of the links that Nelly has put in and the links that I've put into the PowerPoint. Um, you you look people even if they're look at people even if they're 17 years old or they're you know look like they're 85 it doesn't matter they're from a totally different culture than you don't um, get in and, and check people see see what um, oh wonderful Fatima that's lovely um, see what people are doing and what people are saying and take what you need let it soak in. Do the same thing for best practices for blogging in general and blogging for teachers. Start with those videos if you can get them and start looking at what people are saying. And then from there, go out to your search engine and put in the same um, search words, best practices in blogging, how to blog, um, how to brand, how to market, and see what comes up and start reading what's out there. And as you build up your experience, you're going to you're going to know um, what you want to do. There are some absolutely astonishing blogs out there. There's there's not only are there video blogs like for instance John and um, Hank Green who are these wonderful young men who are behind Crash Course on YouTube. They blog um, a modern day version of uh, Pride and Prejudice called the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. There's another gentleman who's a historian of 17th century England who is putting up one day at a time entries from Samuel Pepys's diary, which was from the mid, um, I think it's the mid 17th century, it might be earlier than that. And then there's uh, another English professor who 
was blogging um, Bram Stoker's Dracula, one one letter home at a time kind of thing. So there's so many things that you can use a blog for. You can you can take pieces of literature and put them up there. You can put your own stuff up there, like like Fatima wants to do. There's so many things that you can do with blogs, not just writing a letter to the world, but doing many other things. And then when when you find your voice and you understand your own message, because you have to think kind of clearly about what it is you want to say, what it is, what's unique about you, what makes you who you are, what's really important to you. When you get that worked out, then start blogging, start sharing, start commenting, and blog some more. And just because you have one blog doesn't mean you can't have two. Doesn't mean you can't manage three. There's so many things that you can do. And Nellie's right. You can add. Um, Video, I always do that to thinking about learning my Nans and Grony dot WordPress. Um, when I did um, Coursera, I got interested in Coursera. I've been taking courses on and off, not really finishing them, but you know, kind of dipping in and out of courses for four or five months. And when I did my first, you no, know, really, I love Coursera um, blog. I uh, put in a lot of uh, like the Founders TED Talk and other kinds of things um, about about uh, other kinds of YouTube videos and so on in the blog. So so that's it. And, and one of the best pieces of advice that I heard in this journey that I did to try and search and see what what I was going to do, and I have, I'm ashamed to say, forgotten who it was who said this, but it was the best piece of advice that I thought I had ever heard. And it was, if you are true to your passion, the rest will follow. And I think that's, that's, um, that's so true. If you're true to your passion, first you got to figure out what it is. The rest will follow. So, Nellie, that's that's my talk. If anybody has any questions, I see all these wonderful good uh, good ideas coming up in the chat box of things that people want to do. I also, um, if you want to do a video blog, this is one of my favorite guys. Oops. It's a video blog, um, and there's a lot of those out there. The, the I'm trying to type, but it's not working. Are very interesting on uh, YouTube, and they do a crash course, which is very high, very high production value. This is a, a, a couple of uh, puppets, actually, on on, um, on uh, YouTube called uh, Glove and Boots, and it's a it's it's. It's a it's a video blog, um, and there's a lot of those out there. The the vlog brothers are very interesting on uh, YouTube, and they do a crash course, which is very high, very high production values. But there's so much you can do with much less. I've been following a, a guy named Professor. Um, geez, I can't think of his name now. If it's Tutsi, T U Z I, but he's a guy who does. Who posts all of his lectures for his English as a Second Language uh, training course onto uh, on to, um, YouTube, and it's a very basic, nothing fancy, full of great information and a lot of his own uh, wonderful, um, wonderful kind of personality in there. No, it's not Drew Badger. Oh, he's fantastic. If you haven't seen uh, his talk, it's on Nelly's YouTube channel. Um, and it, just a marvelous talk. Really yeah, I like talk. that one. I, a lot um, of good stuff on I use YouTube. it too. It was just the best day. So if anybody has any questions or any comments or I don't think I have another. Yes, I do. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, <laughs> So Nancy, would you suggest That's vlogging or blogging? That, that, um, Photo. Um, Thank you, Mohammed. I, um, I'm only recently <coughs> about vlogging. It was just the best day. It was smack <coughs> in the middle of this week of teaching, and it was just such a great day. Thank you, Stel. But um, blogging is how I kind of started, and then. I got very interested in how people were doing um, Both, actually. I, um, I, I'm only recently started to um, think about vlogging for uh, um, 
my my sub you know my specialty my my uh, the educational area that I'm mostly in and so I've started a a, a vlog for that but um, blogging is how it kind of started and then I got very interested in how people were doing things on YouTube and um, and I think both have their have possibilities and, and you don't have to be a, a face a you know a talking head in a camera for a vlog you can be a lot of the kids are out there vlogging like crazy and some of them are really marvelous they're um, you know there's there's one called Clara's oh gosh I'm not quite sure it's like it's like Clara's depression cooking and she was she did her video blog um, she did her video blog for four years I think um, it just stopped like a year or so ago a lady in her late 80s and 90s um, might have been only in her 90s totally um, during the whole thing and she had grown up in the Great Depression in the United States in the 20s and the 30s and she was teaching people to cook when one of her grandsons would stand there with a video camera and she was teaching people to cook um, very inexpensive meals that were still very kind of maybe not so healthy from our perspective now but very comforting kinds of food very low low production values just lovely um, and other ones um, you know there's there's well there's all kinds of creativity out there there's a couple of college students that are brothers that do these really high um, high production value um, things where they lip sync and run around their college campus to all this music um, there's a lot of people just sit and stare at the computer and talk um, and John Green and and uh, well Corey Vidal is one of my favorites he's a young man from from Canada who um, did a lip sync to a song called John Williams is the man which is a which is a funny song put together of all the main themes of some of John Williams the composer John Williams works that are in really big movies um, and uh, and it was originally done by a group called Moose Butter in in Canada and uh, the darkest night recently um, they had asked about a year or so ago for all of the people who had started when YouTube started to do um, a video about their yeah the vlog brothers and the other one is uh, crash course which is excellent I took the world history thing so let me let me go back to Corey so I I first found him with with um, um, I first found him with this lip sync to this song called John Williams is the man and I thought he was very charming and I would periodically go back and he's just very interested in Star Wars and all these other kinds of things so that's sort of what he does and um, a couple of years ago they had asked people to put up their their stories if they were a long time um, vlogger for YouTube and he did a 30 minute uh, YouTube video which is very very long for him and talked about his life and how he came to be vlogging and it was very interesting and and you found out by watching this YouTube that the night that he made this um, the night before he made this uh, um, YouTube video this apprentice he, he was calling himself apprentice a at the time and it was John Williams is the man he had no money he was had his laptop and and was had been kicked out of the house by his parents for um, not going to college and some other things that were going on in the family S sleeping on the sleeping on a couch at a friend's house knew he couldn't stay there very long had absolutely no idea of how he was going to manage the rest of his life much less the next week and he and he did this sweet uh, passionate wonderful little four-part video of him um, lip syncing to this story to this song and put it up there well what happened to him was that a lot of people saw it like I did and a guy at YouTube saw it and fell in love with it and put up a YouTube page and it lovely and before long he started to get invited to YouTube conferences and he was able to monetize what he was doing in other ways and now basically he makes a significant portion of his living as a YouTube blogger now obviously I'm not looking for that 
But what made me so touched by what he had to say was on the worst night of his life, he sat down and did something that was so passionate and so true to who he really was inside. That's an amazing thing to be able to do that. So, so there's something really powerful about vlogging as well. So now I'm a big proponent of both. Um, and as Nellie and Ludmilla always say, sharing is caring. You, you, you want to not dilute uh, what you're doing too significantly. Um, you want it all to kind of tie back together. But um, it's, the, it's, it's kind of a wider version of, of um, piece one teacher at a time, which is what Nellie does. Where you see all these people from all over the world who have similar feelings and similar needs and similar kind of worries to you, and then you've got all these folks that have have infinite other things that, that you didn't know about or put a portion of themselves out there. It's just a wonderful world. When I think what what I could have done with this when I was thirty. Um, it's a it's a wonderful thing. I think it's ultimately if we managed not to. Um, yeah, it's amazing, amazing. I'm um, planet, I'm watching Chris it's going to bring McCann. Us all closer together That's the guy who uh, shows our common he has core community nice, and also shows uh, how many people out there yeah, do you have, have that so link, much Nancy? to give and really enjoy being able to Because I'm on to another. Oh yeah, right. So any any questions? Right. Under his picture. Right, but I yeah. No, I, I really I'm recommend Crash Course share watch the, that when uh, I have breakfast. <laughs> here, I have it right here. I was thinking of adding it to the class. There it is. That's that's the one. That's the YouTube one. Yeah, yes. He is really good. And I, and I think, you know, years ago I wouldn't... Oh, it's, in the, it's, <laughs> it's in the, in the uh, PowerPoint. It's in the PowerPoint. Under his picture. He's the young man. Here, here, let me see if I can go back there. I'm amazed by younger, I mean, really young kids under the age of 12 who are sharing. You're talking about sharing well, the, as caring. They're sharing yeah, all kinds of things about how to yeah, use technology. Yeah, he is really good. And, I, and, I and, think, and they're on you YouTube, know, years and it just ago, amazes I down me and how these kids, kids give me you know, advice. where does it come so from? This, how dumb this, is that? Uh, That's why I say, just because they don't look like you, know, you they're not your age. At that age, the you age know, of still under Still listen to 12. people talk. They have good advice. <laughs> A lot of the, a lot of my second life skills have come not from the second life people, but from these nine-year-olds in, you know, in, in Great Britain or somewhere who are saying, okay, if you want to do this, do this, go here, go there. And they're yep. very, they know what they're doing. Yes, they do. Are there any questions uh, to Nancy or? Are, are alive. I think it's wonderful. A lot yeah. of the, a lot and, and of my second life skills have come not like from the second some, life people, but from these nine-year-olds. Uh, let me try you know, to get the in, uh, the link to uh, in the, the Great course Britain or somewhere so who are saying, it. okay, if you want to do this, uh, do this, go here, go there. Handy, and Thomas, very, you must, they know what they're doing. You probably have it handy. Uh, let me try to get the uh, the link to the course. Anyway, all of these links uh, the course is are our lives, so you can also do that with technology. See if I can get that. Probably not. Does anybody have it? Because I would have to be in my other account. I'm um, Nancy. Do you ha happen to have it? Um, I have to open another window. Yeah, me too. Because I'm I'm trying to get this. Um... You know what? I can stop screen sharing. I mean, I can stop the Camtasia, and then. That